it's springtime what a great time of year you know why cherry blossom season is upon us i'm sure you've seen the pictures in washington dc of the cherry blossoms i saw manzi posted one in seattle the beautiful cherry blossoms well i'm going to tell you what i want to show you michigan cherry blossoms because it's springtime so here we go hold on yeah yeah that's michigan cherry blossoms kind of sucks doesn't it but that's okay because welcome to another early morning Sunday show. Jackson, Michigan. It's pretty cool. Graffiti. Not graffiti. Graffiti's it's kind of illegal. So it just puts it up. It's just so different. Look at that. So fun stuff. Oh look, it's a puppy. It's a heavy puppy. Nice doggy. Isn't that neat? That's pretty darn cool. There we go. Nice little car. Come downtown. One of the many Michigan cities that kind of struggling. But man, it was beautiful. Look at that. Hey, look at that. That's a big ass bird. I'm telling you. And welcome back. Early morning show coming to you live from a place that got snow last night. You know, two weeks ago I showed snow. Last week I showed 70 degrees. This week, if we walked outside right now, there's snow again. I refuse to snow blow. Actually, it's not a lot, but the fact is it's cold enough that it snowed. That sucks. And there we have why Cherry Blossom Festival just hasn't been a big deal here in Michigan. Uh, I started the week, uh, no, I started the video with, actually I went to um, some scenes from downtown Jackson, uh, Michigan. And Jackson, Michigan, automotive town, went to disrepair, you know, when the automotive industry went out. Downtown absolutely fell apart. Trying to revitalize it, put a couple breweries down there. Hey, party time. Uh, a lot of good restaurants, and they're uh, trying to get something going. Is it great? No, but they're doing something with it. And the graffiti, you know, they've been on a project trying to um, get the, you know, paint the buildings. It's really cool, so I shared the graffiti. Here's Cat. I, I just want to, with the, the host, the host with the most that says meow. I Here's one thing about Cat. You know, he always shows generally unless it's really warm he shows up and jumps on my lap he doesn't sit on my lap during the day at all at night maybe a half hour at most but damn when i do these videos every time and we're purring away here he is so ah uh, i i don't get it a movie I was just talking about a movie we watched last night. It was, you know, it's, you know, they look at the Oscars. Most of the time, I don't know that. I don't know that movie. One was on Apple. It was Coda. Coda about a deaf family, except the one daughter hears. Oh my God! It, tears, just tears, and it, it, they weren't tears of sadness. You know, like someone dropping dead. It was tears of happiness. I. It really was a joyous, joyous movie if you have apple tv if you can watch it if it's on something else probably everyone but me has seen it but my wife and i watched it and all i could say is when it's done I, I felt so good i mean i just like this this is an incredible creation amazing amazing so what what a movie it's fun when you get something that i mean i'll watch it again because it was made you feel so good all right like music like music makes you feel good um hey are we gonna sit I have one, I got a channel recommendation out there. The name of the channel is Trent's Records. Trent's Records, 270 subs. Uh, Trent, like like so many of us, 
fairly eclectic taste. You know, if I'm watching, generally it's a pretty eclectic taste going on because it, you know, matches mine. I you know, recently, you know, I've asked him what he was listening to. And he's been buying some of this psych um, African music. And, you know, his Africa really developed some great psych, like uh, the old Fiji uh, Brothers, which I believe you will see right there, Lost Origins, because um, that one gets shown next week. Uh, but, uh, again, nice channel, enjoyable take a listen to it go over there if you want give them a sub uh trent's records is the name of the channel so please do that and, and if you're interested you're thinking hey i would like to do this i i will always tell you please reach out to me i i, I will help you i will talk to you i will give you whatever hands i mean i'm not an expert obviously i don't you know i do what i do that's what i know but i'm more than happy to try to help you along and give you any kind of um, advice I can. And I'm going to sneeze real. <laughs> there we go. Okay, one more time. And I could. <laughs> oh, I'm allergic to cat. Okay, so please uh, reach out to me. If you have a channel and you've never heard from me, then you got to tell me so I can look. How about some records? First one. Shannon and the Clams. Isn't that a, that's kind of a different name. Shannon and the Clams. Black vinyl. Rarity. And there is a, got lyrics. Got a little thing there about Shannon and the Clams. That's neat. I want to thank Dan from Hip Hops is the name of the channel. Dan from Hip Hops. He's given me um, some other VCLT. Dan is out of Chicago, he will review a beer and he will take a part of beer and he can tell you every little piece of that, every little flavor. He goes through the notes that come, notes from beer. And then he reviews music that he feels matches that beer. And he said an oyster beer would be good with this. Um, I did buy a darker beer, not an oyster, Dan. I hope you don't mind, but it was really creamy. Uh, and, and so, uh, Please take a look at Dan's channel, Hip Hops. His beer is really, it's really, I mean, the guy does a hell of a review on it. The music here, uh, Shan, uh, these, this is this group. They were uh, formed in 2009. They're out of Oakland, California. They met in art school. Uh, this is their fifth album of six albums that they've done. Their, a lot of their music is more of a garage punk, rockabilly, um, doo-wop type feel. This one here, the name of the uh, album is Onion. Onion, yes, I never actually remember to say the name of an album. This is a more blend, I would say, of um, 60s surf rock, 60s pop, with a little garage rock tossed in. The music on here, it deals with, if you remember, back in uh, 2016 in Oakland, there was the Ghost Ship Warehouse Fire. A huge warehouse that caught on fire, but all these people were living in it. 36 people died, and I believe they said it was arson is what happened. And so the songs, a lot of the songs are structured around this. Uh, you know, there's songs like one was Back Streets, and it's just filled with these beautiful soaring vocals. Don't Calm, um, Don't Close Your Eyes was a neat song. It was a song about self-preservation and after a tragedy, which is what this would have been about. Uh, it's just the, the vocals are shared by um, Shannon Shaw and Cody Blanchard. Those two, they share vocals. They harmonize together or kind of go around. She has wonderful vocals. Is the bass player. A lot of people knew about this album. I had not heard about them or ever... Not, I mean, not, not a thing. I can't say I've ever seen one of their albums. So this is a wonderful surprise. Really good music. You know, the, the lyrics, this is a really intense subject matter. But the tunes are catchy. I mean, they're catchy and they're fun. I mean, almost they're fun. At times, I, I believe it takes away from the intensity of the lyrics and the subject matter that they're talking about, which is important subject matter. But, I mean, it just makes for a very, very fun listen. So, 
Thank you, Dan from Hip and Hop, from Hip Hops, Shannon and the Clans. Great stuff. <laughs> Next, no, I mean you, you've seen you've seen this album one billion times. It's now billion one. Yes, it's Spoon. I yeah yeah. It just takes me forever to show. Though I was really late. I've been on the fence about buying this, and I've heard ooh orangey vinyl. Um, looks like orange. Noranha. Uh, but I decided hey I'm going to get this, and really John from Digital Gramophone. Con finally convinced me I need to get it and I like Spoon so it wasn't like oh just I don't know if I like that group I do like Spoon but I'm always just trying all this other stuff so you know there's only so much money the name of the album is Lucifer on the Sofa Lucifer on the Sofa is the name of the album it came out this year Spoon they've been around for around 29 years can you believe that man I used to have a lot of their CDs uh, I believe they're out of Austin Texas if I'm right this is devilishly fun music very good very good great Spoon it's really a good rock and roll album uh, the the lead singer Brett Daniel from what I heard was um, listen to ZZ Top. He's listening to early ZZ Top, like uh, Lagrange and Trace Ombres. And in fact, there's the song "The Devil and Mr. Jones," and then it just melds into Wild. And when you think about ZZ Top, they had that um, "Waiting for a Bus" that melded into um, uh, what was it? Um, Jesus just left Chicago, and the same kind of effect. Now, the song on here, Wild, incredible piano. And I'm going to play you a sample of that thing. Gosh darn, that's a great song. This is just this is just classic rock for today. Great rock album for today. I, I People have gushed about it. You know, and I, you, know you never know. I'm going to give you a sample. So you, you can make your own decision. But if you haven't bought it, I may be the only one that hasn't bought it yet. But it, I, I enjoyed it. And... Yeah, that, that, that's Tears for Fears up there. That's coming. I even bought that. It's funny. A lot of times I don't buy these older groups. I you know, I don't know. I just, you only have so much room. There's so many new things or some old things I'm bringing in. Who knows? <laughs> The Pazant Brothers, the Pazant Brothers Skunk Juice. Steve, this uh, name, um, this came from Steve and Stacy Bender. They sent this to me, and Steve and Stacy Bender have been very kind. Um, we've exchanged VCLTs. Uh, Steve Bender is the name of the channel. He's the Zonk Man, and I really, really have enjoyed Steve Bender. I have talked with. We've conversed. Um, his wife, I, wonderful Stacy. I think you're wonderful. I'd uh, love to meet this couple. Uh, they're out of um, North Carolina, I believe. But they sent this, and I've never heard of this. He just said, "This is so funky, you have to hear it." And you know, I love the funk. It's skunk juice. This is great skunk juice. Uh, it's this was made by Ed and L. Pazant out of New York. Um, Ed played the reeds, and um, Al played trumpet. And in fact, Ed played for uh, like the Lionel Hampton 
um, jazz band. So he was already playing jazz. And so this is this blues. This is just their singles. They never put out an album. This is singles and a live track. The singles were from the late 60s. Uh, the live track from 1970. A couple songs done in a um, in, in, in a art museum. Funky crap. Now, funk's changing. This funk, you could feel more of this jazz and blues type feel. And I say jazz because you got the trombone. And the trombone almost brings you into New Orleans type of jazz world with that. The way it's playing. Super cool funk. It is not James Brown funk. It is not Parliament funk. This is kind of more the beginning. Again, this jazzier feel to it. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, just great, great listen. Uh, you know, Paul XL Vinyl Junkie. Did I say or XL Junkie Vinyl out of the Netherlands? You, you, you would get a kick out of this one. Uh, so the Pizant brothers you can find this it is out there it is available skunk juice great funk hope you enjoy that sample <laughs> Some African music, and here we go. The S, the Esselbonds, the Esselbon special. I, I don't. Out of Ghana. This is music from a recording studio. That's in Ghana. Uh, and it was Esselbon. You, you know that S S L S not Esselbon S L five S L five here. There. Come up with your own. Well, it looks like Essel Bonds, doesn't it? I don't know why I get Essel Fife. Hell if I know what I'm reading. Okay, this is out of um, Analog Africa. God, <laughs> just the channel. A channel that doesn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> That's, I'm going to rename myself. I don't know. What the hell? <laughs> what, what is this? I did a video on... Um, <laughs> on on my on my record habits midweek if you did see it in a big part I guess I'm told is what is this and someone Ross says why don't you just start name 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 of your channel is what is this I mean because it happens too much with me a uh, beautiful book with this talks about uh, the music Don Essel Fife Bandez and actually the name of the uh, the record label was S Essel Bands, Essel Bands um, Records out of Ghana. And the fact they called him Mr. Essel Van. He was born in 30, died in 2021. His father wanted him to be an accountant and actually sent him to the UK to study accounting. Uh, and that he just didn't want to do it. He uh, he had the music in him, man. The music was in him. He wound up going to Philips in the Netherlands, the recording Philips, and got them convinced to bring to uh, give him some recording equipment, and then allowed him to set up a record plant in Ghana, and um, he became one of the most successful record makers, producers in the 1970s in Ghana. So what you get is a variety of funk on here. It's basically high life music. Talked a lot about high life. You know, Ghana had a revolution in 66. Before the revolution, high life dealt with bigger bands, more brass. After the revolution, there was the, the bands were a lot smaller, but the electric guitar came in. And that's the feel you get on this. He did have the most influential label in the 70s in Ghana. And you just you get a real nice feel. So it's all these singles that were produced by different groups. It's a two-album set. Uh, by the 80s, his music was dying out. It wasn't that popular anymore. So it was Esteban, Esteban Special. And, uh, you know, they called him Mr. Esselbon, you know, but it was his real name was Dick, Dick Esselif, Esselif, 
banderas like you really give a crap right <laughs> but i'm just trying okay I, I i just like saying words i can't say great stuff from analog africa this came out at the end of last year and look at that three months later i finally show it yeah that's how it is with my records okay <laughs> Well, this was inspired by a VC member. This was inspired by uh, Mark at Mad for Vinyl. So Mark has been sharing me a lot of records. And I have developed uh, a nice friendship with Mark. It is on um, All Production. That's kind of a different label. It is. Mark said this is one of the funkiest albums when he was reviewing it on his channel. And when he just said one of the funkiest albums, Mark likes funk. So I went and I bought it. And this is an original. Uh, and it is the Mother's, Mother Freedom Band. Mother Freedom Band. They only did one album. This one here came out in 1977. And this thing has fluid horns. It has just a super tight rhythm section. The bass just has a dance floor feel. 1977 so you get kind of this almost a disco type bass it's not disco though again it's much more funk there's some wonderful ballads on here and there's some great voices for those ballads uh it's just really great stuff there was not a lot of information i will say you know nirvana you know they had that little kid that was naked on there was pissed because his penis was showing well this kid's older and his penis is showing and i bet he's not being a crybaby about the whole thing you know how he was abused by having his penis on an album cover um He's probably over it, but it's like, holy cow, his dick's out. Um, so uh, now I, you know, I claim to be the channel of boobies. I guess I am now the channel of child pornography, and I'll be doing this from the jail next week. Lord help me all. Lord help me. Great stuff. Fun stuff. Okay, almost done. Louisiana Red, uh, recent purchase here. I knew nothing of this, but I've been buying some blues off of a person. Off the Atco label. This was interesting, just to kind of show you this. Everybody's records, games, and videos. Look at that. So this must have been with a record station had had this before. First cut, fourth cut. But <laughs> look at the little characters on here. Isn't that wonderful? You know, uh, you got Cheap Trick, you can see there. Looks like there's a James Brown and Donna Summer. Uh, oh, fantastic. Frank Zappa. Fun stuff. That's, that's just, you know, only record collectors, right? So Louisiana Red, his real name is Iverson Minter. So, you know, obviously that's not going to work well if you want to become a star. Hey, Iverson. No, nope, not, not happening. So it was changed to Louisiana Red. He was actually from Alabama, but now we're Louisiana Red. And he... um. His mom died right after childbirth, and at age five, his father was killed. He was hung by the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, that's how tragic is that? So uh, he was an orphan by age five, uh, which is really, really sad, but, you know, moved around from relative to relative. By 49, he uh, recorded for Chess Records. He was born in 32, um, died in 2012. So uh, then he went to the Korean War came back out and began playing. Uh, by the 50s, he actually, late 50s, he's in Detroit playing with John Lee Hooker. 
and then began to have albums. This album, this fourth, came out in 1972. It is, it, it's, it's not your hard blues. There's vocal, he does vocals, harmonica, and guitar. Has a country blues feel to it, but it is electric. His vocals are okay. He's not the best vocalist, I don't think, but the solid guitar and harmonica going on. So it was just fun. It, his albums aren't expensive, but it's just another type of blues. Really good to hear. <laughs> Final one today, Johann Sebastian Bach, uh, one of his most famous, the Brandenburg Concertos. You know, again, bought a bunch of classical at an estate sale, the only one I've gone to, but I bought this chair. Uh, and, uh, Bach, born in Germany, 1695, passed in 1750. He is one of the most influential of the Baroque music. What is Baroque? Baroque is what they call common practice tonality, is the best I can tell you. It is, they took music, and they took songs, or they took pieces of music, and they wrote them in a particular key. They said, this will be in the key of G. We're going to do this in the key of C. That hadn't been done. That changed music. That's how we do it, right? Baroque music is when someone came up with that brilliant idea and they did it. And the musicians at this time, they had to be so good at, so why are you sitting, man, why are you sitting on the records, man? Come on. Oh, God. All right. And, and so, the, but the musicians, they did a lot of soloing. I mean, I, I mean, they, they had to improvise. Improv improvisation was so important for the musicians when they were doing their solos or in harmony. So jazz is not about the improvising. Baroque music, improvisation. So this is a two-record set. You know, Bach, he, um, his parents died when he was age 10. He lived with his um, older brother. Um, he came from a long, from a family of composers. He made over one, he made hundreds and hundreds of cantatas that were um, both sacred and secular. And a lot of his music he took from the Lutheran hymn book. He was Lutheran. The Reformation was going on. He was in Prussia, very Lutheran, which is why my dad loved him. He was a Lutheran minister. And so a lot of the music was based off these hymns off from the Lutheran hymn book. So the Brandenburg Concertos, he made, there's six of them, made in 1721. And it is the most, probably one of the most famous types of Baroque music. And Baroque music, it's beautiful, it's uplifting. Each one deals with a different instrument and a different key, and that's what they um, feature. He wrote it for um, Margrave, was it Margrave Christian Ludwig of Brandenburg, who was... King Ferdinand the First, the King of Fer King Ferdinand the First of Prussia's brother. The old composers you wrote for other people, they hired you, you made music for them. Brandenburg Concerto is extremely important, extremely beautiful music. Absolutely, my dad was in love with this. This is from my childhood. Hope you enjoyed it. That's it, everyone. Appreciate you dropping by. Have yourself a wonderful... We'll have a midweek. I got a bunch of albums I brought back into my collection I want to show you. Have a good one. Bye.